Well, coming up on today's show, Hyundai Kona EV gets an EPA rating. The car gets a UK delivery date and watch the Mercedes-Benz EQC in pre-production testing. But first of all, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you are in the world, hello and welcome to the Tuesday, the 21st of August edition of EV News Daily. It's Martin Lee here with the news you need to know about electric cars and the move towards sustainable transport. Apologies for the blocked nose and summer cold I'm carrying at the moment. Feels somewhat like a a bag of spanners, if I'm honest with you, Uh, but I wouldn't miss a day on the podcast and to put this together for you. And thank you as well to myev.com for helping make this show. It's the first marketplace for electric vehicles. They made this totally free marketplace to simplify buying and selling your EVs and to help you learn about them along the way as well. Check out myev.com. Well, an update on the article I mentioned yesterday, the Jay Leno uh, interview with Tesla's chief designer. CNBC is now running a teaser campaign for the electric supercar, the brand new Tesla Roadster. There's going to be a Jay Leno special on that. And if you are looking forward to watching it, I won't get to watch it here in the UK, but I'm sure it'll make its way onto YouTube August 23rd. So in two days' time, an episode of Jay Leno's Garage, Garage, I should say, talking to Tesla's chief designer, Franz von Holzhausen, about the brand new Roadster. And a quick hello to anybody who's heading along to Electrification 2018. It's the International Conference and Exposition, and companies that we talk about on this podcast all the time, uh, like uh, I've seen Chargeway today saying they're going to be going along to it, ChargePoint. Our friends at EVGo, if you haven't heard Jonathan Levy's interview from last Saturday, two days ago, the interview is online right now. If you're catching up on some weekend podcasts, or if you're new to it, and hearing some old ones. A fascinating interview with Jonathan on Saturday's show. Go back and listen to that if you haven't heard it yet. And for anybody that is heading to Electrification 2018, uh, enjoy Long Beach, enjoy the day. It's put on by the EPRI, the Electric Power Research Institute. They're a non-profit that does R&D-related activity into use of electricity for the public benefit, based in California. And it looks like a fantastic exhibition going on at uh, Electrification 2018. Big um, pictures of the big conference hall all set up and loads of people with stands there. So uh, have a fantastic time if you're heading along to it or you are an exhibitor. Well, we'll start with some news about the Hyundai Kona EV. Firstly, it now has an official EPA rating. You may recall that the Hyundai Kona EV, uh, the long range version at least, has a somewhat mythical 292 miles of range. That was the one that was advised uh, a few months ago now. Those YouTube YouTube videos have been out putting those real-world tests online, though, and now the EPA has rated the new Hyundai Kona for 258. Big number. 258 miles of range on a single charge and an efficiency. It's an efficient car as well, by the way. 120 MPGE. Well, that beats those estimates that some have been putting on the range, and it's much more in line with what those YouTube reviews have been suggesting. Uh, Better than the Chevrolet Bolt EV, by the way. Almost identical, 119 MPGE, but 20 miles less, uh, 238 miles of range on the EPA. Well, as far as I know from all the statements made so far, only the long-range version of the Hyundai Kona EV is going to be making its way to North America. Uh, Of course, we get a long and a standard range here in Europe and the UK, and a 64-kilowatt-hour long-range version, the only one that's going to be sold, according to the last press release I saw, at least, in the USA. Well, let's stay with the Hyundai Kona because we got some news about early deliveries here in the UK with a letter that's been sent to early buyers. Now, I'm not an early buyer of the Kona. I almost was. Very close. The click to buy opened that day. Yes, I configured. Yes, I was close. Uh, Mrs. Lee, not 100% signed up. She is still... She's humming and ahhing over the 60 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf. Uh, some good news for those who want it and bought it in the UK about when you're going to get the, at least the first cars as well with a letter sent from Hyundai to those early buyers. I'll read you the letter now. I just won't tell you where it came from. It says this, Good afternoon. Our marketing director would like to gauge interest in a vehicle handover event for the first Kona electric deliveries. We do not usually do events like these for vehicle launches, but given the unusual level of interest in the Kona electric, we thought it may be something which customers would be interested in. The potential location is a... 
facility, and I won't give any more details because a little a bit of privacy, I'm sure, would go, <laughs> go down well with Ian Lee's press office. Um, it's in a central location here in the UK. That's what I'll say. For those customers who would like to take part, we'll ship your cars to that location where they would already be fully prepared for handover and fully charged for you to drive away. You would be invited to attend arriving for lunch as our guest before a special event and presentation. That would be followed by a group photo of you and your cars that would be released to the media to announce first deliveries. The facility is not somewhere normally open to the public. It would be a unique opportunity to visit a fascinating and multifaceted renewable facility to allow you time to drive home. We'd aim to be ready for a mass drive away early afternoon. The date for that, Monday, September 10th. So uh, those early buyers of the Kona could be putting those YouTube reviews on, or if they're just normal and not desperate attention seekers like the rest of us, just driving their new car from September the 10th. That would be amazing. Uh, I'd love to be at that event that would be awesome and i'm sure there'll be plenty of media hopefully you would think creating that excitement and those kind of tesla events that we see we know how well they go down with the media and, and kind of whip people up into interest and i'm delighted that hyundai are not just doing something at local dealerships where they very quietly hand over the cars let's make it a big event let's celebrate it and let's get all those uh, those mainstream newspapers and publications and spreading more news about evs they're coming quickly. Well, let's move on to Mercedes. And Inside EVs has found a video online on YouTube of the Mercedes-Benz EQC testing in the desert. It's almost three minutes long. Great little video. Gives you plenty of glimpses into an EQC pre-production model. I'll put a link in the show notes. More screen time as well for Michael Keltz. Now, Michael Keltz is the chief engineer of EQC. And you'll recognize him from the fully charged video with... Uh, Johnny Smith and I've um, I've transcribed what he says in this video as the voiceover and a bit of on-screen time as well. And I quote: "The EQC has been tested harder in that way than we did more tests with other cars than other cars. We have now done testing for three years. We've driven millions of kilometers. We've driven 90 prototypes. Additionally, 30 pre-production cars like the car we have here." We're very close to the series models. One of the hardest tests is in very big heat and then with very dynamic driving. So where we focus on the battery cooling mainly. On the other hand, like gravel roads where we're actually uh, where we're going, we apply a lot of vibrations to the car so we can really see whether the car can stand these vibrations. I consider this car a game changer. End quote. Like I said, a link to that video. It's a nice little short and sweet three minutes of it in the desert in the show notes. A car that will be a competitor to the Mercedes EQC is the BMW iX3. And the struggle for many car makers is the transition. It's all going to be about the transition over the next few years. (sighs) Sorry, I'm struggling. It's just a head cold. Let's try and get the brain and mouth working together. Uh, How do you go from profitably selling combustion engine cars to profitably selling EVs? You can't click your fingers and do it overnight because you've got all of that investment. One of those ways is definitely going to be plug-in hybrids. And one of those is the BMW iX3. That's going to be the all-electric. But the BMW X3, that's going to be plug-in and hybridized. Inside sources, say in Munich... Uh, that the base plug-in model uh, will be known as the X3 xDrive 30E. Catchy. It will share a 2-litre, 4-cylinder turbo engine mated to an electric motor with the upcoming... 330e sedan. The X3 plug-in is going to be launched as a 2020 model with 275 horsepower, 295 pound-feet of torque and an EV-only mode of 30 miles. That is pretty much what most of these big SUVs are going to get. The plug-ins, 25 to 30 miles, is going to be enough for many people to do their commute and back in silence uh, with that instant torque and that's just going to convert them to pure EV so quickly. They'll never need the combustion engine, but it'll be there for long journeys and emergencies and reassurance Uh, so 15 miles to work 15 miles home or a longer commute but some at work charging and you'll do it all without having to use a drop of fuel according to car buzz the x3 sits in a very popular s3 suv part of the market and i would expect that to be a crowded space very soon with more of those type of cars adding batteries and electric motors and a smaller combustion engine 
to help fight the emissions, well, to help adhere to the emission standards uh, which are coming here in Europe, which, let's face it, you might as well adhere to those, but then everywhere else that you sell cars in the rest of the world will benefit. 2020, very stringent new emissions rules coming out here uh, as part of the European regulations. Well, an exclusive report from Reuters has been looking at uh, the Saudi Arabian fund connected to Tesla recently and Lucid Motors, the PIF. That is the Public Investment Fund, uh, the Saudi Arabian Sovereign Wealth Fund uh, that Tesla hopes to tap up for the $72 billion. Well, maybe not because the share price uh, at $420 uh, takes into account it doesn't take into account that a lot of those headlines, Elon Musk will keep his 20-odd percent and a lot of the retail investors will want to go with Elon into a private company. So it could be a lot less, 20, 30, 40 billion are other numbers I've seen. However, still lots of money. Uh, they're currently in talks with investing in the aspiring rival to Tesla, Lucid Motors. People familiar with the matter said on Sunday, according to the Reuters report, PIF and Lucid Motors have now drawn up a term sheet under which the PIF could invest a billion dollars in Lucid Motors and obtain majority ownership. PIF's first investment in Lucid Motors, however, would be less, 500 million, and subsequent cash injections would come in two stages that are contingent on Lucid Motors hitting certain production milestones. One of the sources added, I'll put a link to that Reuters article in the show notes. Well, uh, st- mentioning Tesla, let's talk about the Model 3 uh, and the VINs that have been registered on the Model 3 VINs account on Twitter. First of all, they said this, Tesla registered 2,207 Model 3 VINs, 100% of those dual motor. That took them to 101,000 VINs registered for Model 3. Then a second tweet said Tesla registered 6,836 Model 3 VINs, around 73% of those estimated to be dual motor, the highest VIN now registered is 108,188. They have blown past the 100,000 mark in style. Well, Simon over at Teslarati has been keeping an eye on the accuracy of the online tracker, Bloomberg's production tracker, which has gotten more accurate over the past months. Only 2% variation confirmed to what they made. And now shows Tesla is hitting a production rate of 6,000 Model 3s every single week. As of the time of writing, Bloomberg's tracker estimate Tesla producing 5,942 Model 3s per week. Well, the noise that our EVs will be making in the future has yet to be confirmed, but they will be making a fake noise. All new EVs must be fitted with a noise generator from next summer to improve safety, says the Department for Transport. The United Nations Economic Commission for Europe has adopted a new technical requirement for EVs to have a noise generator fitted, ensuring pedestrian safety standards will be directly applicable to vehicles entering the UK from the 1st of July 2019. Well, the final story today is about some protests that have been happening at Volkswagen. Volkswagen's UK headquarters were blockaded by Greenpeace campaigners and medics in protest against diesel. The environmental organisation launched the stunt at the car manufacturer's office in Milton Keynes. Seven o'clock yesterday morning, activists from Greenpeace barricaded entrances to the building and set up a mock clinic offering health advice, reports AOL.com. An estimated 40,000 premature deaths a year in the UK is caused by air pollution and it's linked to health problems like childhood illness, heart disease and dementia. Well, over the weekend, by the way, just as an incidental, uh, I rewatched. I was on Netflix and it came up as in the things that you might like. Uh, the Dirty Money episode, Hard Knocks Life, that one. And uh, I rewatched it. I mean, I'd seen it before, but a little while ago. And if you have Netflix and it's well worth watching again, just to be a, um, just to kind of remind yourself why it's so important that we need to move towards electrical vehicles as quick as possible. Well, Greenpeace is demanding that Volkswagen commits to completely stopping diesel cars and producing only EVs. A spokesperson for Volkswagen said this, the Volkswagen Group has launched the most comprehensive electrification initiative in the automotive industry with Roadmap E. This will bring an additional 80, 80, 80 new EVs 
to the Volkswagen Group model range by 2025. Roadmap E brings a 20 billion euro investment to the electric vehicle technology uh, with the goal of 25% of Volkswagen Group vehicle production comprising electric electrified, not electric, but electrified vehicles by 2025 and 50% by 2030. Uh, end statement. That's what they had to say in response to Greenpeace. Well, thank you for uh, bearing with uh, the cold and the flu uh, today. A little mention, by the way, for our question of the week from myev.com is all about electric range. I'm just bringing your, compiling your uh, responses to that, and we'll get to those later in the week. Do you really need all the ranges, what they're asking? How much range is enough? What's your ideal range? And how does that tie in with charging speed and charging locations? Thank you for your comments so far. Those that have told me your thoughts, I'll read those comments out on a future show. And a heartfelt thank you to the 63 patrons of the podcast whose generosity means I get to keep making this show (laughs) in sickness and in health (laughs) which aims to entertain and hopefully inform thousands of listeners every day now about a brighter future if you are interested in just checking out the page it is patreon.com slash ev news daily you can listen to all previous 217 episodes of the podcast on all the usual podcast places. And the audio goes on YouTube, the blogs, evnewsdaily.com. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow.